Here we are, 1944, and I can tell that because I was in that band, that's a Gloucester ROTC band, marching down the streets to the blessing of the fleet. There's the state fish pier where the archbishop came, and uh, the old, you can tell by the old cars, this is somewhere around 1944, we don't know directly. My dad took these shots, and uh, he had a hobby of an eight millimeter camera, and there's a caravan of cars that's coming down for the blessing of the fleet with Archbishop Cushing, we believe, but all the archbishops came there at one time or another, and there he is there. Gloucester boy, look and pay the Massachusetts Bay when the sun comes up on Monday. All the boats, this is the Portuguese at the time. I don't believe they had that now. They still have the Italian festival, but the Portuguese festival was down at the State Fish Pier, and the bands and the parade was there at all times that the Archbishop came. The vessels were all lined up with flags and whatnot, as you can see. The flags and what were all for the festival for a few days when the Archbishop would come on Sunday and bless the fleet. I can remember that, and I was 14 years old when that happened, because this is when I played in the band and I see myself there was 1944, so that's accurate. We don't know a lot of what's in this movie, even short movie, but um, I do know a few things that was happening at that time. And there's the blessing of the fleet. Right there is all the vessel line up, an echelon formation, and kind of one by one are blessed as they come by by the archbishop or the cardinal. Cardinal Cushing was one of the ones that I can remember distinctly. Now we're down at the ice company where you can see that big chute, the big round chute. That's uh, where the ice is ground up the, the, out of the, re the uh, freezer processes. And uh, they shoot it down into the hole, just fill up the hole with ice before they're coming out. Usually in the morning that they'll be leaving is when they do it. You can see the ice there, some of it, and the hole are going in the hole. And this was to ice the fish down. Way back in the old days, they did a little salting and a little of this, but now, that's a gentleman that I remember that used to come and get us a cupcake. Yeah, Earl Roberts, an engineer with Dad, a great, and lived up on Mayport Avenue, and there's some schooners going by. I got to call it a schooner, but it's, it was dragging at that point, and it's kind of converted. And <clears throat> coming down there now is another dragger. The big draggers then had the doors, sides, the gathers on the sides of the on the sides of the boats, and that is the uh, Curlew. The Curlew is the boat that Dad was on for many years. John, uh, they, they were owned by Larry McCune. Larry McCune, that's her going out on a trip or maybe just going out beyond the breakwater to adjust the compass. But that's the Curlew, and she was owned by Larry McCune, uh, and uh, had an office down on Duncan Street, and. Him and a, and a shore engineer and Jim Sousa, and this is the skipper. This is the skipper, Bob, Bob Fralick, that lived up on Wheeler Street that I can remember. And he had many, many, many good trips. He was a high line skipper. A high liner is a term that they had for the skipper, the boats that came in with good trips most of the time. And uh, a broker was a broker, and a broker was what they called a trip when few came in and didn't get have any fish, you, you had a broker. You had to pay expenses. That was first, and then there was, I think, a 60, 40 percentage of money came out from the owners and to the, to the crew. All the crew seemed to work on these fixing of the, uh, the uh, nets and the mending of the nets, and there you see them all the time, and you hear Dad talking about that all the time. My dad was not really on deck, but he was on the deck a lot. A lot, Demi time they had a lot of fish coming in. They had everybody, all hands, was up there handling the fish. But he was a chief engineer on every boat that he was on. My God, it was black and cold. And don't you remember Cape Ann? Now you can see a man out there that's getting near the big net. Now the net is held open by them doors the big doors, as they call them, wood-framed with an angle iron. And uh, then 
They'd drag along the bottom and get the big schools of fish, sometimes random fish, which they would sort out. They called it culling, culling the fish. But all the ground, ground fish, the haddock, the cod, the pollock, all that stuff, they had to, there's your doors that's keeping your nets open as they drag along and uh, they had them on each side, port and starboard, and they would be, uh, they would tow them things with them open. Seagulls are everywhere. They're way out to sea now, and uh, you find that the seagulls are still chased them if they get a shot at catching and uh, getting a few, uh, a few of the, uh, the fish that fall away, then they get some more to eat. Well, we speak of don't let the gulls cry fade to the skies. <laughs> And he threw all the booze over the rail. And don't you remember Cape Ann, boys? Don't you remember... These are men in fairly good weather here. They're bringing about the fish. They have a huge bag of fish. How many pounds, I don't know. This may be it, and it'd be hanging up. They tie a special knot of their own uh, down below. You can see that bag coming along. There's a special knot and the seaman gets down under, you can almost see there, and pulls that knot loose, and then the fish are all over the deck like they are now. If you're hitting them, there's a uh, fish that all has to be cleaned. It all has to be slashed down the stomach and all the insides taken out. There was some fish at the time and different times that different fishermen would save the, the livers to make cod liver oil down here at the plant by Gartens and uh, there was once in a while a young fellow from high school might be taken out on a trip we never did because uh, dad always said this fish has some of them actually rolling and the fish going over the side but it was known to be bad luck because it did happen to take any family members, your kids, out on a trip, even though they all would have loved to around high school. And it was, unless, Dad always said he'd line us up with another, on another boat, but he didn't want him going with him. He didn't want him going with him because something drastic, awful happened years ago and some of the family was gone. This is a big, Catching net, how many pounds, I don't know. The big beam trawlers I know used to have carry 430,000 pounds they could. That was the steel beam trawlers out of Boston that Dad was on. But this one, I don't know how much it holds, well over 100,000, I'm sure, but I don't know exactly. Like I say, some of the big beam trawlers used to able to take up to 430,000 pounds and, and they'd be all different species in a sense. They'd be uh, in a lot of uh, codfish, a lot of uh, haddock especially, and a lot of halibut, not as big as the one you see here. They, they were in school, so they were smaller. But halibut was a favorite fish along the, the old days. They're here with a pitchfork, they're culling the fish, which is actually the word means sorting the fish out in different cod, a haddock, a halibut, a flounder, they'd, they'd put them in different boxes here, and then when they put them down below for storage, there would be shoots of ice going down there as they put them there in different setups. This is just washing the fish after they're gutted, you could see the red blood and uh, they just dip them in there and uh, kind of wash them and then uh, ice them, take them, ice them down and then take them to be processed when they get home and taken out. This is a huge halibut that they've caught in the net. How big, I don't know, but it has a real thick belly on it, so I'm sure it weighs an, an awful lot. And I would say somewhere between four or five or 600 pounds, but. I don't know, but every now and then they'd get a big one, but halibut they used to get much of, there's more fish right up to the gunnels, having a good trip. Rolling on, dear
time today the semen there that are setting the net up so that they can put it back and see the fish move in there they're still still alive all hands to man the capstan see the cable running clear pull around as you can see the door the door over to the port side there is 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 this setting up the, to that, like you say, keeps the, the net open as you're dragging along. There's the doors there. Sometimes they call it auto trawling. But these were all the draggers, and this is a box that was floating way out to sea that Dad took a picture of because it was kind of interesting. They pulled up alongside it to see if anybody was in it or if it was there. It was close to the warriors, and here's the seagulls way out to sea, anywhere where there was something to eat, the seagulls. And like I say, I hope the gulls' cries don't fade to the skies. I sailed by a schooner out to the banks when I returned. Yes, I'll give that Oh, how I hail the green band tree. How great I feel. By the man of the wheel. Hey, I'm just a Gloucester boy, ocean loving Gloucester boy. Irish cane on a Saturday night, but we go to mass on Sunday. I'm just a Gloucester boy, ocean loving Gloucester boy. Sail by a schooner out to the banks. When I return, yes, I'll give thanks. Oh, how I hail the green band trail. How great I feel by the man of the wheel. Hey, I'm just a Gloucester boy, ocean loving Gloucester boy. Irish King. Saturday night, but we go to mass on Sunday. I'm just a Gloucester boy, flounder loving Gloucester boy. Look in a the Massachusetts Bay when the sun comes up on Monday. Now give me corn hay, for goodness sake. I yell louder for having chowder. I search my soul. For lemon soul, how great I feel by the man of the wheel. Hey, I'm just a Gloucester boy, ocean loving Gloucester boy. I raise hell on a Saturday night, but I go to mass on Sunday. I'm just a Gloucester boy, flounder loving Gloucester boy. Look in a the Massachusetts Bay when the sun comes up on Monday. Herons in the bay, and I yell louder for the chowder. The sacred cod is next to God. How great I feel by the man of the wheel. Hey, I'm just a Gloucester boy, ocean loving Gloucester boy. Look and aid, Massachusetts Bay when the sun comes up on Monday. Hey, I'm just a Gloucester boy, flounder loving Gloucester boy. Look and aid, the Ipswich Bay when the sun comes up on Monday. Oh, no 
fish tomorrow. I hear the gulls cry, fade to the sky, and to my sorrow, no fish tomorrow. I hear the gulls cry, fade to the sky. Don't let the gulls cry, fade to the sky. Don't let the gulls cry.